Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game the video. Today we're taking a look at a Naya Colored Tokens deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring four copies of the new Mondrak Glory Dominus, 4 mana 4 4 legendary creature that doubles all our tokens. So it applies to creature tokens as well as treasure tokens, which we're using in this deck. You can also make Mondrak indestructible by paying some mana and or life, and then sacrificing two other artifacts and or creatures, which we can also set up pretty easily. So to get the most out of Mondrak, especially if we want to tap out for it on turn 4, is we need to be able to make some tokens the same turn we play Mondrak to be able to pull ahead. And we can do so in a multitude of ways. At 2 mana there's the full set of Gala Greeters, which when another creature enters can make a tapped treasure token. So if we play Mondrak with the Greeters out, we get to make two tapped treasure tokens right away to give us a nice mana boost on the following turn. Then we can also gain two life with it or put a plus one counter on the Gala Greeters. Then at 3 mana there's a full set of Wedding Announcement, which will make a 1-1 token end of turn if we didn't attack with multiple creatures, otherwise we get to draw a card. So if we play an Announcement and then follow it up with Mondrak, we get to make two Human Tokens end of turn, and then eventually we'll get to pump the team as well. And then Adlin can also make an extra 1-1 token with Mondrak out if we attack with a creature with Adlin out. And then the Fable can make a 2-2 Shaman token that makes a treasure when it attacks. So turn 3 Shaman token allows us to make two treasure tokens if it attacks with a turn 4 Mondrak, which then also allows us to play another 2-drop perhaps and make even more tokens. And then of course if we play Fable with Mondrak in play we get to make two Shaman tokens. And then eventually the Reflection of Kiki Jiki can also copy our creatures in the form of creature tokens, which also get double by Mondrak, so there's a ton of synergy there. And then at 4 mana we can also set up our Stimulus Package, which has inherent synergy with our Gala Greeters, since we can cash in a treasure token for a citizen, and the treasure can even be tapped for that to work. So we can use that both in our turn and the opponent's turn to make a whole bunch of citizens and maybe more treasure, especially with Mondrag doubling everything, we can very quickly pull ahead. And once we have a board full of 1-1 tokens, we can go over the top with a Rabble Rousing, which is a 5 mana hideaway enchantment, get to take a look at the top 5 cards of our library when it enters the battlefield, exiling one of them face down, and then whenever we attack with one or more creatures, create that many 1-1 citizen creature tokens, and then if we control 10 or more creatures, we get to cast the exiled card for free, and Rabble Rousing goes very well alongside Mondrak, as you can imagine, quickly amassing a whole bunch of tokens. Then we've got a tiny bit of interaction with the Wandering Emperor, which is also great with Mondrak, maybe doubling the Samurai tokens, and then the minus two can exile a tapped creature gain two life. Could easily play more copies of Wandering Emperor, but as you can see we have a lot of four drops already, and I think Stimulus Package plus Gala Greeters is too good to ignore, so I couldn't find room for more copies of the Emperor. And then at 2 mana we've got a full set of Join the Dance to make 2-1-1 tokens at sorcery speed, and can also flash it back out of the graveyard so we don't feel bad discarding it to Fable, and can also be important to set up an early Adlin to help make even more tokens. And then at 3 copies of Courier's Briefcase, which counts as a treasure, so we can sacrifice it to our Stimulus Package, and can of course sacrifice it to make 1 mana of any color to help us ramp. We'll make a 1-1 one -one Citizen when it enters, can also pay 1 of each color, tap and sacrifice it to draw 3 cards, which can also come up if we make enough treasure tokens to begin with to fix our mana. And then at the mana base itself has a few goodies with Iganjo and the Crucible also quite synergistic with Mondrak making several 1-1 tokens. And then we've got a few of the new fast lanes with Copper Line Gorge as well as a Razor Verge Thicket. And then Jetmir's Garden also very important mana fixing in a three color deck. And then just a nice mix of other dual lands from Innistrand as well as some of the Pain lands and a couple basics to round things out. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a nice opener. If we can curve Fable into Mondrak, especially if we pick up another 2-drop to play afterwards, we could be off to a blazing start. Okay, now that we have Stimulus Package, we're hoping to find Gala Greeters. Put in Mono Black, turn to Underdog. Alright, there's Gala Greeters. Now we still need to find a land to play Mondrak, but with Fable that shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, Edict deals with a Shaman, so no double treasure for Mondrak. So we might take a slightly different approach. Okay, so what do we get rid of? I might want a second Greeters to go with Stimulus Package. Rousing is gonna 
take a while to get going, although with double greeters and package, that's certainly reasonable. Emperor is a great answer to underdog. So my hand's pretty great, but at the same time I definitely want to draw land. So maybe one greeters has to go. And uh, a rabble rousing. Sure. Okay, so this turn is going to be kind of disappointing. Just a gala greeters. Which is probably going to end up dying to removal before it gets to make many treasure tokens. Obliterator, yeah. That's going to put some pressure on us. Although Emperor also can potentially exile the Obliterator. Make a treasure. And then I could go for a Stimulus Package. And then maybe wait for Obliterator to attack, since they might keep it on defense, in which case Emperor wouldn't be able to exile it. And then with a Package and a Greeters, we can also gain some life. So I'll make another token now. Gain two life. And then pass. And then Mondrak plus Package and Greeters is great too. So they seem mono black. And I could block the underdog, but I'll just take eight. Possible they have an Invoke Despair, which will get rid of our Package. Although we can always sacrifice Reflection instead. Shieldreds, okay. So definitely make a treasure. And then maybe keep our two treasure tokens to go with Mondrak. Can draw. So I'll play Mondrak. And then Reflection could copy the Gala Greeters as well. So we should be in pretty great shape, all things considered. Can wait until the opponent's turn to copy Gala Greeters with Reflection. So, we'll pass for now. Can protect Mondrag by sacrificing some tokens. Okay. So I'll jump shield roots and take five. Maybe before taking damage I want to copy Gala Greeters so I can gain a little bit more life. Although we might see a removal and response. Okay, two Gallagreter tokens. So these can all make treasure. Gain some life. So we're about to go off. Damage happens. We're at three. And if Rex and Arena's fine, opponent can draw all the cards they want. And then we gotta make sure to... Oh, looks like we didn't get a chance to use Stimulus Package while we had a Greeter still in play. That's fine. We already got most of our value from them anyway. But would have liked to get a few extra triggers, I guess. So I want to make enough tokens to make sure we have a powerful Rabble Rousing next turn. Although we're mostly there already. But might as well make more tokens now. Okay, this is probably enough. I'm not going to kill the opponent next turn yet. Just want to leave myself with enough mana to combo off. So we're down to one, but now we'll copy Gala Greeters, which can gain a bunch more life. Emperor can exile either Obliterator or Shieldred, but we want a Rabble Rousing for starters. Find a wedding announcement. Sure. And 
we'll get plenty of tokens back on defense, so not too concerned. Gallag Reader's triggers on the stack to gain more life. And I think Shieldred's probably our biggest concern right now, so we might end up exiling it. Edict, make a sacrifice a non-token creature. Okay, so let's lose a reflection. Okay, opponent chumps and takes a bunch of damage. And yeah, I think Wandering Emperor exiles Shieldred. It's probably the safest play in the event of some sort of board wipe that deals with the smaller tokens. And then we'll still have Galag Reaters to gain a little bit more life in the opponent's turn with the Stimulus Package. Opponent's at four. I am almost sad to see you go. And we get to draw off announcements, so now we don't lose life to Shieldred. Possible we could have made some different plays. Opponent is at three, so they were pretty close to dead. And our opponent explodes, yeah, just a mere 40 plus tokens here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is missing green mana. So I don't think we can keep. This is decent. Double greeters would be great with stimulus package. So I think I'm sadly gonna have to get rid of rabble rousing, which would eventually be great with the greeters as well. Could have also played thicket on one since we don't need red mana on two, and we may draw another fast land. Okay, found a rousing anyway. Hope our monorad opponent doesn't have removal for greeters, although that's wishful thinking. Phoenix chick. And play with fire. Well, now we're just hoping for a fourth land. So we can uh, play package. Now Mondrak also an option. Squee. Okay, so get to keep our greeters. And now we just need an untapped land. Join the dance. Not the worst. We'll go with treasure. And then... I think two life. Although plus one counter lets us block a 1-1 token. Sure. Does mean that a removal spell now is even better on the greeters. Impulse goes digging. Finds a land land. Okay, can we keep our greeters for one more turn, please? Double block squee. Block a 1-1. One, one. Okay, so Stimulus Package, I think over Mondrak for the time being. And then we activate Package now to get a replacement treasure. And then we can wait until the opponent's turn to activate it again, potentially gaining two as well. Chandra, pretty good, but still beatable. Opponent has three cards in Graveyard, so at least Squeeze not coming back right away. And a Mechanized Warfare. Yeah, so now Phoenix Jig deals two damage. We'll have to chump the Swift Spear. Could have also put a counter on greeters to then block the 1 1 for free, but I think gaining the 2 life is more valuable. Okay, so we can play Mondrak with greeters and stimulus package in play. Let's see if that's good enough. So make double treasure now, and we'll immediately gain the life while we can. 
And then now Greeters is probably fine to attack Chandra alongside the token to take it out. And we can use the Greeters again in the opponent's turn. Could even make Mondrak indestructible, although it's going to cost us four life. Felden, sure. And Foundry activates, okay, I think we're actually in decent shape now. Make some more tokens, more treasure, more life. And uh, that's probably good enough for now. Go to blockers. This looks fine. Felden goes digging. They could still find and the festivities to deal with a bunch of tokens. Lightning Strike is 4 damage. But time for Rabble Rousing. And Wedding Announcement looks good. Sack with everyone. Free Wedding Announcements. Lots of Gala Greeter triggers. And we'll pass. Opponents got two cards in hand plus a Lightning Strike we know about. Another Warfare means Lightning Strike is now 5 damage. Phoenix Chick is 3. So we should be good to go here. Can make some more tokens to gain life. But we have Lethal on board. Okay, damage happens. A lightning strike goes upstairs and our opponent explodes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, hand is promising. Briefcase into Fable, and then Mondrank on four. Can easily discard one or two copies to the second chapter now. Hope our opponent's not playing Thalia, since that could delay the Fable. Yeah, there's Thalia. Well, I guess we can still sack the Briefcase, or I can just play Mondrak, and then next turn Fable makes two tokens. Hope they don't have a Brutal Cathar to exile Mondrak, I guess. Sure. If we can hang on to Crucible, that can also make more tokens. Seems worth a shot. It's going to be a Siege Veteran instead. Okay, so we get to have our two Shamans. And get to hang on to Crucible. If they exile Mondrank, we've got a backup. If not, we can discard it. Ooh, Phyrexian Vindicator. Yeah, that's pretty good. So opponent on Mono White Aggro. Attacks with Thalia. Probably okay to take four. Could jump with a 1-1. One, one. Um, it's going to be a while before we have profitable attacks. And we're going to be taking damage in the air, which we don't have a great time blocking. So sure. I'll jump. So discard double Mondrak or Mondrak Sundown Pass. Now, of course, we could attack to make a ton of treasures. Which is tempting. Did not find any spells. If I channel Crucible, make four one ones, attack with the shamans. Kind of go all out here. Is that worth it? They can block Mondrak with Vindicator, deal four upstairs. Yeah, this is rough. I think getting the treasures is worth it. So let's channel. Smash. And then at least we can make Mondrak indestructible here if we'd like. Or we can play a replacement, although seems better to just uh, 
Sacrifice the one one that's about to die. And another token, or maybe the treasure at this point, since we have plenty of mana. Opponent can deal four to her face, but takes out a shaman. So we're taking 11 on the way back. Late on arms is unfortunate, but at least we've got a backup. So need to find Wandering Emperor to exile the Vindicator, or just go over the top with like a rabble rousing. Greeters isn't bad. Opponent deciding to play defense with a Vindicator. And we'll hang back as well. We've got a board capable of enabling Hideaway if we find our Rabble Rousing. Opponent's got one card left. They may enlist with a Guardian. But nope, opponent hangs back. So probably wait until the opponent's turn to copy Gala Greeters in the end step, and then we can uh, get the Greeters to persist in our turn as well. Hang on to Gorge to maybe discard to another Fable. No attacks. So it's a bit of a waiting game. Whoever can top deck something exciting first. Okay, so end of turn. Copy Greeters. Get two tokens. Making a bunch of treasure. Gaining life. Untap, and there's a Rebel Rousing, perfect. What do we get? Another Fable. So we don't need to go completely crazy, but I kind of want to go completely crazy. Copy Gala Greeters. Make more treasure, gain more life. And then the original Gala Greeters can stay back. Everyone else attacks. Mondrak probably also better to stay untapped to play around Wandering Emperor. Sure, this looks good. Have to pay the uh, Thalia tax as well. And now we'll get our plus one counters. Get two Shaman tokens. Okay. And now with 16 citizens, we should be able to present lethal next turn. At least that's the hope. We've got 18 treasure tokens, so if we find briefcase, that can easily draw three. If we find stimulus package, that's another 30 plus tokens. Now I could sacrifice to Mondrak here to prevent a Vindicator from dealing any damage. That looks okay. And keep Gorge in hand for Fable. Siege Veteran's fine. And our opponent seems to be in trouble. And they explode. Awesome. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play. Hand is decent. Join the dance, maybe setting up Adlin, make an extra token on three. Put on blue-black Gala Greeters is even better now. Get to maybe trigger it twice with Adlin next turn. If they take it out, then I'll play Fable first. Alright, so opponent could have instant speed removal or a counter spell for all we know. I think I still give Adlin a shot. Alright, that worked. Make a treasure. Attack. And we'll go for a plus one counter now. So this is an ideal start. Opponent with a prologue to draw, give us a poison counter, so it looks like a blue-black proliferate deck. If we had an untapped plan, we could have played Rabble Rousing, and now I guess we can. Okay, let's just go for Broke. I guess a counter spell's not unlikely here, so maybe I should just double spell to play around it a little bit better. Join the dance, see if there's a response, and then Fable, everything main phase to grow Adeline. Alright. I reject imperfection, so all according to plan. Opponent does get to proliferate, add a poison counter, but they'll need to come up with a sweeper soon. Otherwise, rabble rousing is going to be the final nail. Treasure, attack, plus one counter. Opponent already down to seven life. And our opponent explodes, yeah, that's what you get from the powerful greeters into Adeline opener. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems quite promising. We've got all our enablers to go with Mondrak, greeters into maybe a fable. So let's hope the greeters can survive. Opponent on band colors. And an Ivy, so it's a poison deck. Okay, we've got our work cut out for us. But at least we're on the play with a good start. Make a treasure. And I'll offer the trade since our opponent's probably gonna take it. Okay. Discarding probably join and briefcase. So, I have to sack my treasure to play Mondrag, but that's okay. Opponent might have a counter spell. Right, that's too bad. Can still attack, make a treasure, and hit our land drop. So, don't quite get to run away with Mondrag here. But at least we're ahead of mana. There's a Rock Priest to synergize with Ivy. And triple greeters with stimulus package is pretty nice. Can gain a ton of life, of course. Not what we need against a poison deck necessarily, but uh can still make more mana. So maybe greeters plus announcements could also greeters attack and then still play a stimulus package. That's gotta be better. And then we can attack. Opponent may have a combo trick here to set up an ambush. Hopefully they don't. But it looks like a shore up. Nope. A sense. So yeah, they can block both my creatures profitably now. And we'll lose one of the greeters. Up to two poison. And play a stimulus package, I think, over wedding announcements. And then we'll cash in a treasure now. Could even play another Greeters first. Yeah, that may be worth it, actually. Make treasure. Cash in treasure. So you get some plus one counters going. And another treasure. And then I'll pass and use again in the opponent's turn. Okay. Counterpart copies Rot Priest. So that's going to get out of hand quickly. 
Now at least IV Copy is still legendary, so they can't have two in play at the same time. But double Rock Priest. Wouldn't mind top decking another Mondrak here. Another package, a bit redundant, still makes two treasure. Copy Gala Greeters. And then attack all out. And then before damage, make a couple more tokens to get the plus one counters. And another one for a backup treasure. Poem falls to four. Announcement can draw. And then we'll be able to make more tokens in the opponent's turn, but uh, we may die to poison before we get to untap. Double Rot Priest Ivy, four poison already. So March could be very dangerous here. Our opponent's ready to finish us off, I think. Yeah, March targeting three creatures. With double Rot Priest at six poison. All right, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand could use an extra land or two, but briefcase can always make mana, so I think we try it. Ideally, briefcase into announcement into Mondrak. Up against black aggro with an evolved sleeper hitting us for two. And another sleeper. So yeah, pretty aggressive start. Could give us some trouble. Hoping to find a Gala Greeter soon to combine with a Stimulus Package, gain some more life back. Still in favor of Announcement before playing Mondrak so we can get immediate value. For now, take four. Okay. So, play Announcements. Might as well attack for one, since we won't have a good double block since these can grow up to a 3-3. And then next turn can play Briefcase into Mondrak, although then we don't get double tokens. So might just play Mondrak and that's it. Leave the ability available for one mana. Go for the throats on the token. So probably implies they have another removal spell in hand. But we'll find out. At least they won't be able to deny the two tokens end of turn. And now we can make Mondrak indestructible, even if it costs us four life. Liliana, not great against the token strategy. Okay, so things are looking up. Sacrifices must be made. And get to untap, and now we get to go off briefcase. Briefcase, join the dance, might be the play. Although Stimulus Package is also tempting. And then play out Iganja so we can still keep up the ability. And then we can discard join the dance to Liliana if it pluses, since I don't think we're attacking. Just make more tokens while Mondrank is out. From the team. And then we have five treasures, which represents ten tokens with stimulus package. The next turn we could just attack for the win. <laughs> we all have things we'd rather get. Blast Zone doesn't change that. Invoke Despair. Okay, so we'll cash in the Stimulus Package 
and make all the tokens, and then our opponent should be dead on the way back. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand desperately needs a few lands, but if we find them, then uh, we've got uh, three mana cards to synergize with Mondrag. So on the draw, we'll give it a shot. Okay, promising start. Play farmland so I can play turn two greeters if necessary, as well as join the dance. Okay. So... Turn three, what do we start with? Probably Fable. Opponent on a proliferate deck. This time we don't have that explosive opener of Greeters into Adlin, so we'll see how a slower game plays out. So whatever we play here is likely getting countered. So I guess we'll give him Announcement, which we have two of. And then we could flash an Emperor end of turn to play around a counter spell a bit better. And then if we untap with Mondrak, we can immediately make extra tokens. Opponent doesn't have any cantrips to play end of turn. Curiosity, draw two. And probably see another two mana counter here. Okay, at least they're tapped out. We can resolve one spell. And I think Fable... Gets the nod. Since Mondrank is likely to get removed before it generates any value. Prologue to apply the first poison counter draw card. And Serum Snare to bounce a Shaman. Proliferate up to two poison. Okay, double wedding announcement. Gonna be the play. Crucible can go. Or I guess... Sundown pass, and then maybe hang on to Crucible if we draw another land. Okay, join the dance I would have liked to discard, but... Double announcement seems to resolve. So we're on the board at long last. And then now if we play Mondrank, it's going to be a lot more effective with announcement triggering end of turn. We can maybe play join the dance alongside it. Anoint exiles a token, that's fine. Curiosity and draw two, still costing three mana at least. So they're looking for another proliferate, and they found it with the Serum Snare. Okay. So now they're uh, bring the ending counters for two mana, but hopefully they don't. Does Mondrank resolve? Let's join the dance. Four tokens, excellent. Could have also gone with Briefcase before playing Mondrak to have the Indestructible available, but the removal is in the form of Anoint with Affliction, as we see here, which exiles anyway. Okay, let's see for six tokens can go the distance. Drown puts us up to four poisons, so still a long way to go. And a Skull Dweller 1 1 Death Touch with Toxic, so if it hits us, they get to apply a poison counter. Okay, so team gets to attack, Gala Greeters into Briefcase, and then Greeters can make a treasure, I think. Since we could still use more mana if we draw off Announcement. So let's start by attacking. Fraska's Fall, sacrifice a token, that's fine. So some awkward removal spells in this matchup, for sure. And then we may actually end up Getting 5 mana to draw with a briefcase. Since we can make some treasure. Draw 2 end of turn. And our team is looking quite deadly. Prologue to draw, apply a poison. And another Vraska's Fall, so we are up to 7 poison here. But do we have lethal on board? I think we do. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Okay, so we got to see our Naya tokens deck in action. 
And yeah, the deck is capable of some incredibly explosive starts, especially now with Mondrak doubling all our tokens. Of course, a bit light on interaction, so it can be overrun and doesn't necessarily come back from behind, especially if you don't have the Galag Reaters plus Stimulus Package to gain some life, and against a Poison deck, of course, uh, gaining life is not the answer. So don't expect it to be the most competitive deck in Standard, but it can certainly do some very impressive things, unlike many others. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.